Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Friday, July 1st. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you're somebody that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how, how they can be used to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Real quick, a couple of clarification points before I get started. First off, this number you see over here will still be changing around. And then the candlestick, as recalled, will be moving around. That's because the market's still open for a small amount of time. But I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day type price movement. So keep that in mind. And then also I'll be using the 30 minute time frame. So if you're a beginner, what that means is that each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one here, ticker symbol REVB. And what I like about this one is the ability to draw a trend line here that I think a lot of people have drawn. So this is a situation where I'm not trying to impress you. I'm not trying to apply that me drawing this trend line here has taken years of experience or is some sort of secret discovery. In fact, the exact opposite. And I say all that because when a lot of people are watching the same trend line and wondering the same thing, call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want, it can definitely produce some you know, worthwhile dynamics. So there are no guarantees in trading. However, my point is this, is if the price can recover back up to that trend line and get the break up through it, is it valid? Is it rational to think that if the price breaks up to that area, that that could create some additional buying pressure Absolutely. So definitely keep a close eye on that trend line there if you like to play this price range and if you like to play potential breakouts. In terms of areas of support, the interesting area of support if this thing does keep on pulling back, keep a close eye on, going to be right down there at that dollar mark. So keep an eye on that. But in my opinion, at least the most interesting dynamic is all about that trend line because you got to think that there's lots of people watching and wondering if the price can break above it. So we'll see what happens on Friday. Next one, NRSN, and a very unique situation here because last I looked at this, I was thinking about, you know, I'd be talking about a whole lot of different things than what I am now. That's because you can see that that 30 minute candle and then the final 30 minutes as we're witnessing right now, I mean a complete, complete turnaround. So I'd still wanna map out the one level that I, I thought I'd be putting more focus on, but is seemingly getting more and more irrelevant here as the price pulls back. But is this area up here at this breakout point at $4.40? So yes, 440 is still that key level of resistance. Again, I thought I'd be talking about it and putting a lot more emphasis on it. Uh, but with the pullback here, what's now more intriguing is this potential pullback area, which is based around this former breakout area, which sits down here right around $3.15. And this is just based on a foundational rule in charting, which states when former areas of resistance. So going back here, you can see was a resistance, resistance, resistance are broken they tend to act as support so as mentioned are there guarantees no but is it valid is it plausible to think that if the price does pull down to 315 it could find some support and then potentially get some sort of bounce back to the upside that is certainly a, a plausible game plan to have uh, so keep an eye on that but if the, the price somehow reverses around then yeah 440 is a key level and interesting level of resistance but uh, after this late day pullback here it's looking like 315 is going to be more so that uh, you know that the most relevant dynamic Next one, AMC, and we're going back to the whole talking point of self-fulfilling prophecy. So once again, this is not me trying to imply that this is a great skill, a great discovery. A bunch of people have drawn that trend line right there because it's doing a great job of just illustrating how AMC has pulled back, but it's been a controlled pullback. It's not like it's been a crash. And I mean, in all actuality, I'm, I'll draw that here. We essentially have a, a bigger overall pattern. So we have the resistance there, and I realize these lines are pretty rough. We have an area of support there. We have the big momentum move right there, and this would be known as a bull pennant pattern. So that's one way you could certainly look at this is a big bull pennant. But if you just want to simplify it more, in my mind, all eyes are on that tread line. All eyes are wondering, can the price finally get a break up through it? And as I've said, and will continue to say, because I really want to drive it home, there are no guarantees, but is it valid to think that if the price can break up through there, that could create an upside movement? Yeah, that is absolutely a, a more than rational thought process to have. So if you like to play breakouts, then definitely keep an eye on this AMC tread line. Next one, M-U-L-N, was, was just a brutal day. And I don't mean it in the sense that it was red, but just how things started off. I mean, start, you know, the day started off with a gap up. Price opened up right there, which was higher than where it was. And then, I mean, op opening 30 minutes, look at that. Nasty, brutal red candle, down it went. And then just been slowly bleeding ever since there. Um, so, you know, just kind of crazy how the market can be sometimes. Start off looking so strong and then completely just give everything back up, which now brings about an interesting level sitting down here at, so let me get this into play first, the dollar mark, and dollar is significant for a couple of reasons. First off, it's just a, a big round number. You know, there's just something psychological about a dollar. So you have the psychological attribute to it. And then you go back in the history of things, you can see that there's also the track record 
back here on the 13th where the price was down here, found support, and then made a huge bounce. Now, don't get me wrong, and I wish I could say trading was this easy. If the price comes down to a dollar, is it for sure going to skyrocket back to the upside? No, of course not. No guarantees. But is it plausible? Is, is, is it valid to think that, okay, it's, it's bounced from there to four. Maybe there's going to be some sort of double bottom pattern. Yeah, that is a rational thought process to have. But that is why risk management matters so much because just in case you are wrong, you want to make sure that you cut that loss and not hold and hope or anything like that. Uh, so if you're wrong, okay, small loss. But if you're right and you do get some sort of bigger bounce, then you could look be looking at a, a, quite a bit of you know more upside potential compared to what was being risked. Next one, TQQQ, and this is one of these leverage ETFs here. Um, so if you like to just play the markets in kind of an indirect type of way, T to TQQQ is one way to do it. It's been getting absolutely massive volume. So you know that there's lots of people watching it. And a couple levels that stand out to me. So let's first just get this initial area. And the first one here is this tread line right there, which has been doing a, a very accurate job of forecasting where some of these you know little bounce points have been. So if you go through the history of the tread line here, you can see these points did a fantastic job of forecasting that level. So if this is, thing does break to the downside, then right down here, you know, give or take, right around this level at, you know, let's call it $22.50, uh, you know, could provide a nice little another bounce point back to the upside. But on the flip side, I mean, if the price does come down to that area and breaks down through it, that could also be, you know, kind of like a, a little bit of a opening of the, the momentum to the downwards direction of the dam uh, that just creates a whole surge, you know, in the bearer's favor. So keep an eye on that 2250 area. I think a lot of people will be watching that level uh, because of the tread line right there. And then as far as levels of resistance are concerned, in the near term, that key level of resistance, if there is any sort of attempted bounce to the upside, going to be right up there around $25. And let me change that to red for resistance. So keep an eye on that. But in my opinion, at least, I, I'm most intrigued by that tread line right there. That doesn't mean that mean, needs to be your most intriguing point. But for me, uh, I, I find that pretty interesting to see if it does come into play, how will the price behave at that. But yes, if the price does try to turn around, then $25 is certainly public enemy number one. Real quick, wanted to pause and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online training that I'm offering. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can, how it should be used to help build consistency as a trader, then certainly get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down below in the description box you can click on. Or if you're watching my at my site, there's an area right there on the webpage you can click to get signed up. With that being said, one unique situation, it is a live event and depending on when you watch this is going to depend on or is going to dictate a few things. So if you're watching this, let's say Friday morning, for example, then you've already missed it. But I will be recording a live event. So after I get it uploaded and you know everything, I, I'd be happy to send you a link to it. Or if you're maybe watching this right now, Thursday after the market closes, but you already have something on your schedule this evening, totally understand if you have kids or a family or whatever, uh, but so you won't be able to attend, then again, drop me an email, clay at claytrader.com, and I'd be happy to send you a link. But if you can make it live, then yeah, get signed up, and I'll hope, hopefully see you there in a few hours. Next one, EVFM, and I like this one for one simple reason, and it goes back to that talking point of self-fulfilling prophecies and how that can be a, a very nice thing when you know a bunch of people are watching the same level. And in this situation, in my opinion at least, all sorts of people are going to be watching that dollar twenty mark. I mean, you go through the history of that dollar twenty area, you can see presented a whoops, let's go back. You can see presented a problem right there. Presented a problem right there. Presented a problem a whole bunch of times today, including the last thirty minutes. Price got right up around that area and couldn't quite push through it. So Guarantees, no, but valid, rational to think that if the price can get up to $1.20 and break up through it, that that could create some good, solid upwards buying pressure. Absolutely. And then in the realm of areas of support, after today, we have yet more data that whenever the price has gotten down here around this 82 cent mark, it's done a great job, including, that, like I said earlier today, you can see the price was hanging around down around that area and bounced once again, like it's done previously before. So if you prefer to play pullbacks and keep an eye on that level, but from a pattern standpoint, really just a sideways channel has formed. Again, top of the channel, 120, bottom of the channel, 82 cents. So we'll see how it plays out on Friday. Next one, TSLA Tesla. And this will mean a bit more to those of you that watched the video I did on this one yesterday, but the lines that I talked about completely came into play again and you know uh, were very relevant. Namely this level up here, the red line at 685. And you know, like I said, I put that line into place yesterday and, and the power of charts. So I'm not bragging about myself or anything like that. I am bragging about charts though. So another quick plug, definitely get signed up for that free event, but check it out. I mean, look at this, put this line in here yesterday. You can see the opening 30 minutes rejected, came back up here again. And once again, rejected, rejected, rejected right up at 685. So I'm not saying that 685 can never be broken. I'm just saying that it's become that much more apparent now that 685 is going to be a key area of resistance. And if the price can come up here, and get a breakup through there, then yeah, that could very well create a nice kind of, you know, kind of leading indicator 
that there more be maybe a whole lot of more upside momentum to come. And then the other levels that turned out to be very relative were these area of support down here. I call this the resistance zone. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that level there. And now focus more so on this 667 mark, uh, which when it was broken earlier on in the day, you can see, Nice move to the downside. Now it turned out to ultimately be a fake breakdown, but if you're a day trader, that was still plenty of opportunity to, to make some money in that range. But point here being is it bounced back up, came back down, and now you can see that once again, the price is finding some support right around that area. So as somebody that's always watching Tesla, uh, and I, I didn't trade it today, but uh, is always keeping a close eye on it. Uh, you know, six, uh, 667 is gonna be a level that I'll be watching very, very closely amongst, I'm sure, many other people. So we'll see what happens with it, but 685 key level of resistance, 667 key level of support. Next, REV, and I like this one as maybe, just maybe, we got some sort of leading indicator of a bigger turnaround to come. Uh, not to state the obvious, but just to build context, price has been drifting, 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 drifting. Then all of a sudden, you got a move to the upside here. All this is occurring on very respectable volume. So this now brings about the more than valid question of, hey, is this a leading indicator to something much bigger? Now think about that question. It's impossible to ask that question, is this the start of something bigger, if nothing worthwhile happens in the first place? I mean, there are thousands of, of tickers out there where you can't ask that question because nothing worthwhile happened. So it makes no sense to say, hey, is this the start of something bigger? But we did get that in this situation, which makes it unique. And that's the whole idea of a watch list. Find unique situations and then watch them. See if they begin to behave in a way that fits your strategy. So yeah, from just drifting, drifting down to all of a sudden, a nice move to the upside on bigger volume. That is an interesting situation. So yeah, is this the start of something bigger? It might not be. That's, that's possible. But what happens if it is? then you could be looking at another nice situation here. So let's see if today's movement is an indicator that this thing wants to show some more signs of momentum back to the upside. Next one, BBIG. And I mean, I'll, I'll just be perfectly honest. I'm not quite sure what to think of this one, but that's also why it's on the watch, just because it's a unique, it's an interesting situation that seems worth at least watching because I, I can't quite tell. Is this thing, is it kind of game over? Because I mean, it was terrible all of a sudden came back to life, now seems to be just drifting back into oblivion. But it hasn't drifted totally back into oblivion because if it were to bounce or bottom out right here, then you'd have a set of lows here, you'd have that set of lows down there, and if you envision those as stair steps, you'd still actually have stair steps progressing the right in the upwards direction. So, like I said, it, maybe it just feels like this bounce here should have kept on going, but again, that, that has by no means been a collapse or anything like that. So it's inter it'll be interesting to see how the price behaves moving forward in terms of whether or not it's gonna to wanna to maintain above this general area or not. Now, if it does continue to move upwards, then what catches my eye, and I think a lot of people will be watching, is the top part of that previous bounce, which was right there at $1.48. So in my mind, $1.48 whoops, is gonna be a key level right there to keep a close eye on, on any sort of bounce to the upside. If this thing does continue to just bleed to the downside, uh, then level that I'd watch, I don't, I don't know, you know, like I said, how convincing this level down there at a dollar thirty is, but dollar thirty could be a potential bounce point. But like I said, a, a kind of a confusing chart. Not sure what to think about it, but I know enough to realize it, it, it's interesting. So let's see how it closes out on Friday. Next is PLTR, and first update that needs to come into place, which will be relevant. And this is just based on a foundational rule in charting, which states when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance, and that is exactly what happened. Today, so the price, yes, gap down below that level. So it expects to act as resistance. You can see when the price bounced up around that area right there. Price ultimately found areas of resistance and just couldn't quite gain any sort of momentum or make any sort of bigger pushes to the upside. So you're gonna wanna keep a close eye on that. If the price can push up through there, then don't get me wrong, that, that's certainly a step in the right direction, uh, but you don't wanna get too, too excited because not that far away, you then have the 50 period moving average, that purple line right there. If the price does pull back to the downside, well, then you have this very famous, very well known pink line, which is the 200 period moving average. And that's why it's famous right there. Check it out. Big move down and oh, what a coincidence right where the price decided to start to bounce back to the upside. Um, so like I said, not saying the price will go down to that level, but if it does roll back over, then that 200 period moving average will be that key level of support. So that wraps up the top 10. Again, like I said earlier, if you enjoyed what you saw here and you wanna learn more about the tool, how it can, how it should be used and certainly get signed up for the free train. Like I said, it'll be this evening, Thursday, June 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. But also if you're not able to make it live, cause like I said, you're watching this on Friday morning, you've missed it. Or if you're watching it and you already have something on your schedule, uh, then drop me an email, clay at clayjoy.com, and I would be happy to send you a link to the recording. Just remember, it is a live event, so it first needs to happen 
And then after I get it uploaded, I'll send you a link to it. And then as far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this format, if you would like for me to continue to make these videos, then please do two things for me. Hit that like button, leave a simple comment below. Say hi, tell me what you traded today. Give me a smiley face emoji. But those two things communicate to me that you enjoyed. And as long as I know people are enjoying these top 10 videos, I will continue to make them. So everybody take care, get signed up for the class, and hopefully I'll see you here in a few hours.